day of somewhat inclement weather here in Skopje and that the concern was could affect the turnout and the turnout has been very important in the first round of this election and indeed this one because there was a 40 percent threshold that needed to be achieved for this result to be valid. Now we're still waiting on official results. Let's get some thoughts from uh, Petr Arovsky, a political analyst who joins us now. Petr, results not clearly in yet but the indications certainly are there at the moment. Well, certainly the big hurdle seems to be over, to, to have been overcome with the threshold already met at around 6.30 p.m. Uh, with the official uh, uh, press conference of the State Electoral Commission, there seems to be no uh, dilemma as to whether uh, the country will elect a president to begin with. And that sort of puts us in a, in, a, in a rather easier situation, meaning that there's not going to be a new political crisis. Now we have to wait for the results to see which way it goes. Uh, there seems to be... Uh, both camps seems to seem, seem to claim that they have that they're, they're being the favourites to win, to win it. But we'll see what happens. Is the decisive factor, and I know it's hard to tell at the moment, but we were talking the other day about this. The votes coming in from the Albanian minority, who gained what about 11% in the first round. Yes, the Albanian minority had 11% uh, in the first round. The turnout seems to be seems to have kept the same in the Albanian. Uh, uh, in the Albanian municipalities, which means that the votes from the third candidate, Blaim Reha, who didn't qualify for the for the runoff, seems to have been seems, seem, seem to have been compensated by the additional turnout by the existing parties. So, uh, in in some respects, uh, the Albanians will, may well decide who's going to be the next president of the country. The first round was that a lesson? Do you think being given to the existing government of the Social Democrats? The the overall message that seems to have dominated in the first round was one of uh, lack of patience with the electorate. Not in so much as change of direction in which the country is going, but the pace with which it's going there. So it seemed to have been a message with the government to pick up, to actually implement the necessary reform, to speed up the reform process, to speed up the institutionalization of rule of law, etc. Uh, the additional turnout in the second round maybe seemed to have uh, it seems to indicate that maybe the government received the message because the Prime Minister did indicate that he planned to implement some changes in his cabinet. So the indications at the moment, and again it's not definitive, are looking towards Mr Penderovsky. Would we be right in saying that? Yes, I would give him uh, the edge uh, a little bit over Gordon Asiyanovsky, especially because it looks like the Albanian, uh, the Albanian votes are going to be a decisive factor. And in the recent polls, uh, he, he led 80% to 20% in those votes. So I would still give the favour to Penderovsky right now. OK, Petr, thank you very much indeed. And of course this is a situation which reflects very much on the future direction this country is going to take. It has been a time of instability going back some uh, three decades. Uh, this is a confirmation of where they're going to go in the future. But as we say, the results will become clear over the next few hours or so.